A prominent Western gunfighter, Indian scout, and prospector, Buckskin Frank Leslie is most renowned for his role in the killing of Billy Claiborne, a member of the notorious Clanton Gang, which had a bitter feud with the Earps in Tombstone, Arizona. Born as Nashville Franklin Leslie on March 18, 1842, in San Antonio, Texas, little is known about his early life. He commenced his career as a scout for the U.S. Army, serving in Texas, Oklahoma, and the Dakotas during the early 1870s. He was easily identifiable by his distinctive buckskin jacket, which earned him the nickname Buckskin Frank. Subsequently, he ventured to San Francisco, where he pursued work as a bartender. Upon his arrival in Tombstone, Arizona in 1880, the town was overrun with outlaws and a motley assortment of characters. It was a turbulent time as the Art brothers endeavored to establish law and order in this unruly settlement. Despite his modest stature, measuring just 5 feet 7 inches in height and weighing 135 pounds, Leslie had already established a formidable reputation as a gunfighter. Adorned with a matched pair of six-shooters holstered at his hips and armed with shooting skills that Wyatt Earp later likened to Doc Holliday's, Leslie seamlessly blended into Tombstone's rough and unruly population. Eager to flaunt his talents, Leslie frequently showcased his sharpshooting abilities, often by targeting the ceilings of numerous saloons along Allen Street. Leslie also possessed a contentious and belligerent nature, particularly when under the influence of alcohol. Even amidst the infamous tumultuous crowd that roamed Tombstone during Leslie's tenure, he stood out for his quick temper and the swiftness with which he resorted to his firearm. Upon his arrival in Tombstone, he briefly found employment at the Cosmopolitan Hotel located on Allen Street and also staked several mining claims in the vicinity. Nevertheless, historical accounts indicate that his time was more often spent within the gambling establishments rather than engaged in honest work. He promptly initiated a romantic liaison with a married woman by the name of May Killeen, an alluring brunette who had separated from her husband Mike. Despite the estranged marital status, her husband Mike remained intensely possessive and went around warning anyone that he would shoot any man he caught in May's company. It didn't take long for this threat to become a reality when he discovered Buckskin Frank in the company of his May on the porch of the Cosmopolitan Hotel. Mike's confrontation with Leslie ended tragically on June 22, 1880, with the incident officially deemed as a case of self-defense. Merely a week later, Frank Leslie and the grieving widow Killeen became husband and wife. After the gunfight at the OK Corral on October 26, 1881, the Arps, who were allegedly friends with Leslie, moved into the Cosmopolitan Hotel, feeling safer there than in their homes. At a later point, Leslie violently assaulted a man outside the Oriental Saloon, which significantly heightened the concerns of Tombstone's residents regarding his dangerous nature, even among the already notorious crowd in the town. Following the mysterious murder of the renowned Tombstone gunslinger John Ringo, suspicion fell on Leslie, although law enforcement officials were unable to substantiate his involvement. After the Orp brothers had departed from Tombstone, Leslie found himself embroiled in a heated dispute with Billy Claiborne, a surviving participant in the OK Corral gunfight. Claiborne insisted on being called Billy the Kid after the death of William Bonney, falsely claiming he had killed three men who had mocked him. However, records reveal that he had only killed one man before his encounter with Leslie. Claiborne's reputation took a hit as word spread about his fleeing the OK Corral gunfight. On November 14, 1882, Claiborne quarreled with Leslie after the gunfighter refused to address him as Billy the Kid. Later that evening in the Oriental Saloon, a drunken Billy Claiborne stumbled in and resumed his argument with Buckskin Frank. Leslie had had enough and promptly escorted Claiborne to the door, unceremoniously tossing him out of the saloon. But Claiborne's determination remained unshaken, and he quickly returned armed with a Winchester. He made grandiose threats about killing Leslie the moment he stepped outside the saloon. Word of Claiborne's intentions reached Frank, and he decided to take up the challenge. He left the saloon, and the long-anticipated gunfight unfolded. In the chaotic showdown, Claiborne's shots went wide, while Leslie's aim was true, 
hitting Billy multiple times. As Claiborne lay wounded in the dusty street, Leslie approached him, and the injured man managed to utter, Don't shoot me anymore, I'm killed. Friends of Claiborne rushed him to a doctor, but he succumbed to his injuries six hours later. Allegedly, his final words were, Frank Leslie killed John Ringo. I saw him do it. Claiborne's epitaph humorously read, Billy the Kid takes a shot at Buckskin Frank. The latter promptly replied, and the former quickly met his demise. For Leslie's account of Claiborne, refer to historical testimony here. When Apache uprisings erupted in the mid-1880s, Leslie once again served as an Indian scout for the U.S. Army on two separate occasions. Back in Tombstone, things took a sour turn on the domestic front. After seven years of marriage, Leslie and May divorced in 1887. May cited one of the reasons for their split being Leslie's odd habit of wanting to shoot her silhouette on the wall while she stood there, reaffirming his remarkable shooting skills. At this juncture, Leslie had taken up a bartending gig at the Oriental Saloon, though his preference lay in spending most of his leisure time at the Birdcage Theater. It was there that he crossed paths with a young singer and prostitute named Molly Williams, and in no time, the two began cohabiting. This Lady of the Night also went by the monikers Blonde Molly and Molly Bradshaw. While her promoter bore the name Bradshaw, he wasn't her spouse. However, in due course, he met an untimely demise, and Leslie found himself under immediate suspicion. Frank neither confessed to the man's murder nor explicitly refuted his involvement. Right from the outset, Frank and Molly's relationship was grounded in their shared love for whiskey, which invariably fueled frequent and tumultuous disputes. The volatility reached its peak on July 10, 1889, when Leslie fatally shot Molly in the head. The gruesome act unfolded before the eyes of another man named James Neal, known as Six Shooter Jim. In a shocking turn, Leslie then turned his gun on Jim, injuring him as well. While Molly succumbed to her injuries, Jim managed to survive and would later testify against Leslie. Buckskin Frank found himself sentenced to a 25-year term in Yuma prison. The folks in Tombstone breathed a sigh of relief happy to be rid of the gunfighter who had admitted to taking the lives of 14 individuals. Surprisingly, after a mere seven years behind bars, Leslie managed to secure parole, thanks to the support of a young divorcee named Belle Stoll. Following his release, the two embarked on a journey to California, where they exchanged vows in Stockton on December 1st, 1896. Subsequently, they enjoyed an extravagant honeymoon in China before coming back to the United States and opting for a quieter existence. It is said that Leslie ventured to Alaska during the Klondike Gold Rush before eventually relocating to San Francisco, California in 1904. By 1913, he was operating a pool hall in Oakland, California. According to the 1920 census, he resided in a lodging house in Sausalito, California, being documented as a 77-year-old, unemployed and single man. In 1922, he vanished from official records. While the exact circumstances surrounding his passing are uncertain, there is speculation that he could have been the destitute homeless individual with the same name who passed away in San Francisco in 1930. 